Got it. Welcome to the Service Delivery Committee meeting, 2nd of September. Um, apologies, are there any apologies? Uh, Brian. You'll need to unmute, Ronnie. Brian, unmute. Sorry. Yes. I'm muted instead of unmuted. Um, I've got an apology from Councillor Payne and we're missing one other. Who was it? One? Violet, is Violet Bruce here? Oh, yes, yeah, so there's two that had. I'll, I'll give them a tinkle, but I'll put down both Violet and Payne because they were both at audit and risk and intended coming. I'm here, here's Brian. Joe. Ken Zim, where are you, Ken? Oh, well, I'm right beside you on my screen. Oh, you are too, so it's only Councillor Violet. Yeah, is Joe entering now? Well, so I'm going to withdraw we... all apologies and we'll just let it see who comes in. Right. So we'll just leave that as it is. Uh, any declarations of interest? No. Um, we'll fire ahead to the item number one, which is an item for decision. Uh, three waters update. Um, Steve, do you want to run us through this, please? Sure, sorry, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's like four clicks to just check back the agenda on one screen, unmute, put video on, and then there's always a delay as a consequence. Sorry about that. Um, thanks, uh, Mr. Chairman uh, and uh, councillors. Um, this follows um, on from what was uh, previously um, uh, promised and that we haven't formally had uh, information brought to council or committees on the Three Waters um, reform. In particular, there is this um, eight-week period, which is now down to um, three and a half weeks to the end of September, uh, where, the, where the government has made some changes to the original um, uh, timeframes um, and specifically has uh, stopped any... Um, uh, consultation requirements and decision requirements on whether you're opting in or out of the Three Waters reform and is instead seeking specific feedback on the proposals uh, that they have, including the proposal to have one entity for Inaitahu Takuwa in the South Island that uh, reflects or impacts on us that we would be a member of. Um, and so this this update gives us that opportunity to just bring it all together with the information we have at the time, um, not asking for decision about opting in or um, opting out. Um, there's a lot of noting, as you will see in the, um, uh, in the resolutions. Um, we were using a template that uh, Taitura, which is the old um, Society of Local Government Managers um, provided and they've spent a bit of time in the resolutions just covering that issue publicly about um, not, um, not consulting and not requiring to make a decision on this particular issue. However, if you look at resolution eight, um, you'll see that does uh, have a decision there in respect of uh, directing um, some feedback. Uh, and there were some suggestions um, there uh, in the report at uh, section 6.2. But there's also the possibility that um, if lockdown uh, opens up, uh, you may still have, um, as we had intended, uh, a meeting with rural water schemes or rural water scheme committees or leadership, and there may be an opportunity for feedback there. So there's still opportunity for additional feedback, but this gives um, uh, you, the, you as councillors um, the opportunity to formally um, um, identify some feedback now and also give provision to still do so before the end of the month. So it's a very complicated subject, but I hope it's all uh, reflected in the report. Um, and this, this is your formal opportunity um, to address what the government's asking for um, before the end of September. And I'll just leave it there, um, Mr. Chairman, and happy to answer any questions. Well, any questions or anybody? Um, 
just signal with your hand if there is. No. Oh, Brian. Thank you for that. My apologies. I'm looks scrambling for all my paperwork. Not surprisingly, the kitchen table is a mess. We did have some bottom liners the other day that we discussed councillors that we want to have. And for the life of me, I can't just find them to refresh my memory. But one thing that I was wondering, um, quite a lot of the, the commentary coming out from the public is that they just that they need information. If I could direct this to Sue Wilkins, please. Sue, are we able to put this uh, this report not only on the web page but highlight it somewhere so that it's not just a you know a link or a line that might be overlooked, but um, there's pretty much that's that's a real good base reference for information for our council, and I'd like to see that as sort of like the one of the bibles that we can go back to on the web page. So. That's my first comment. And please, councillors, help me out. What were the bottom lines that we wanted to go back to the government with? Remember, we had two or three the other day, and I'll get back to and look at my paperwork. Uh, anyone else? Uh, Kenny. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just down. trying to re recollect my thoughts too, and I think one of them was around staff retention, mm -hmm. Your Worship. Um, and uh, there was something around the rural water supplies too. So just somebody else would be able to to carry on from that. But there, there was a couple of things that I did have jotted down, but I can't find the paper in front of me just to support that. So yeah, just to start that conversation, perhaps. No one asked that if you just want to speak, just um, put your hand up. Uh, John Herbert. Yeah, I think the, I think part of what we raised, uh, getting back to Kim's question, part of what we raised about the rural ones has probably been answered and will probably be answered further when, when Alan yeah. has his visit down here. I mean, because it... That the comment was made, well, I made the comment at the time that I feel like we're kind of in this holding period or in this middle ground where we're not actually a rural water scheme as they've defined it. We're not just a few houses, you know, taking water off and hundreds of houses and, and, and small communities and schools and, and the like on it. So that was really, it was really trying to get across to them what a rural scheme is. And he's coming down to look at it, which I think is fantastic. And we've already talked about that earlier um, is how we best utilise his time. But that's the first thing is he's actually coming down. But I'd also like to make the comment that I really enjoyed that report, Steve, because it's really it's put a whole lot of things that's in all of our minds in a concise line and time frame. And I think it's really, really, good. it's a really good thing to refer back to. And I think the only decision we make is on the six point two is what what we include in that in that recommendation. Uh, because from my point of view, with with rural water schemes, there's been absolutely no conversation, no no presentation from them regarding. You know, we've had quite a lot about what could happen, the fluctuations in price, whether you're in or out for households, but there's been nothing on rural water schemes. So it's really hard to make an informed decision when you've got no idea what, what's on the table. Um, so the first step, he's coming down, and that's, that's, that's the beginning for that process to start for rural anyway. Uh, Steve, did you have you got your hand up? Uh... Uh, yes, thanks, Mr Chairman. I just... Um... The, uh, the things that I had sort of listed um, when we first uh, were discussing this um, was discussions like um, uh, the, the charge is going to be harmonised. That was across the board. Um, in terms of rural water schemes, though, how will it be charged? Uh, we did say about coming down and see because there was the, the paper that had just been produced about a couple of days before uh, that the government thought was helpful about rural schemes. But you can see when you read it that um, they really haven't provided for the type of scheme that we've got that are that are probably true public schemes. Um, we talked about the rural scheme options and uh, there was also uh, a wider issue um, when you're talking, I think staff retention was also about boots on the ground. I had a note about that. Um, then the further discussion was that um, that actually we didn't felt it was going to do justice to the rural water scheme 
um, issue itself and the understanding in the government's eyes for that, if we just put a couple of bullet points, uh, you know, in addition to that 6.2 section. And so the suggestion was that actually we should be making a specific, you know, two or three page or whatever business case about the rural water schemes and, and have that in addition to and as part of, you know, a list like, like in 6.2. So I think that was really important. Um, Jules provided not long after that, you know, a graphics of the, the scheme network itself. And uh, whilst we understand it and have seen it uh, before, I mean, any government politician looking at it would get quite a surprise or a shock at the true extent of the uh, network that we're actually talking about. So those are the notes that I had. Um, uh, and really, I was just saying, Mr. Chairman, that I think that we need to do justice to that uh, subject and that it should be the, the, um, an additional separate business case um, that sits on top of 6.2. Thank you. Ellie? followed by Mel and Brian. Hi. Um, firstly, Steve, I think it's a great report and thank you very much for the time that's gone into it because it has been really helpful. One of the points I noted was the, and I guess Steve's pretty much covered it, but extending the time frame to bring in the rural water schemes. And I guess that is to allow for better consultation and the business case that Steve is um, suggesting. So I would like to see an extended time frame available um, for bringing in the water schemes. And while we're talking a lot on water schemes, I actually also think it's important that we are discussing with our urban counterpart. I mean, the, the, they have as well, if you look at the numbers, they're greater in numbers. Our rural schemes are certainly important and they're different, I accept, to um, what other areas might have. But we also have to. Um, consider our urban people and they definitely need to be consulted. So while we're identifying, we need to have meetings with our rural water schemes. We also, I believe, need to be having meetings um, around our other areas in the district who um, are not on rural water schemes. So probably that's my six months worth for now, thanks. Thank you, Ellie. Mel? You're muted, Mel. There we go. Um, I wasn't at that, oh, I wasn't at that workshop, so uh, you may have sort of talked about this, but just just the note one point two one point three in Steve's report, page ten, retain local and bespoke service delivery. Where a district seeks to maintain a higher level of service, they reckon required it of entity D fund and deliver it locally. Can you explain what that what that means? Is that is that sort of um, something that you know are we are we sort of looking at rural water schemes in that in that way? Or I didn't really know what it meant. Um. So that section was just put in um, uh, to update in terms of the work that's been done by the Zone Five Six councils with uh, Naitahu and around some um, non-negotiables there. So um, what, what that, that is, is it's basically um, supporting the view that any entity that is created must um, support local um, and not have a situation where um, as a consequence, you know, uh, we lose too much, that in fact, uh, local towns and that should be supported. Um, one of the examples that they would be raising at Naitahu side of things would be, you know, um, uh, that there are communities around Marae and things that are not um, well supported in any way. Um, but it, it also was reflective. They were very strong on wanting to ensure that within the Naitahu Takiwa, that towns are not negatively impacted by, um, by this uh, entity. Uh, even to the extent of ensuring or enshrining, um, you know, perhaps through those um, statements of service performance or whatever, that um, that actually we don't end up with, you know, big regional um, uh, corporate bodies that are, um, you know, not supporting the local towns. So that's what that means. Uh, Brian? No, you're, you're mute. 
you you muted. Sorry about there. that. <clears throat> One of the key things around that was also Christchurch's stance. They want a high. They an absolute bottom line for them was that they want a high level of service and the fact that they won't have chlorine in the water. And I thought no chlorine in the water meant that we'd be saving on costs, but it actually increases the costs by about seven times because every drop of water has got to be safe. Whereas we do point chlorination and then out it goes and there can be a bit of um, stuff getting into the water, but it's still safe. So Christchurch, if you want to do it, you can do it, but you got, your ratepayers have got to pay the additional cost. I was wondering with the uh, directives, uh, number eight, directives for the following feedback for the government, the, the first bottom line I think we established was that we must have the ability for comprehensive and constructive engagement with our public before we make our decision. So we put that as a bottom line that whether, you, whether the minister comes back and says, uh, this is what it is, that our bottom line is we don't make a decision until we have had constructive and comprehensive engagement with our public. And then um, for those councillors that weren't here when the meeting first started, <coughs> it's been arranged for the 23rd of this month the Alan Prangnell and Bill Bayfield will be coming down and doing a tour of a few of the key plants. And then that night, we're hoping to re-kick that uh, rural water scheme meeting. Uh, let's hope we go down to level two and we have that meeting. And consequently, I wouldn't like to put a bottom liner from council until we get that feedback. We're going to have time. We've got uh, seven days till the cutoff point for the minister. So how we put that in wording, but if we don't specify what our bottom line is until we've heard from the water scheme chairs and the committees and also heard from Pragno and Bayfield. And then the other bottom line that we had was, um, you, you know how people are commuting down with mental health and what have you to hear the hospitals, that we retain our staff locally. That's not locally a target, it's locally Clutha. Um, they were the three pointers that we had. How we worded, it, I don't know, but I think around the rural water scheme, I don't want to get ourselves tied in until after the Pregnal Bayfield water scheme meeting. Thank Cheers. you. Stewie. Thanks, Mr Chairman. Uh, I agree with what you've just said, Brian. Um, I thought... Alan Pringnell made the comment that all council staff that are associated with Three Waters, their jobs would be guaranteed. That's I don't know what guarantee means. Guaranteed as per the terms of your contract or something. But uh, um, just just a, an interesting point. Um, uh, there's probably four or five of the schemes those three uh, that actually produce more potable water. Per, on a daily basis than Valclutha Township uses. So, you know, there's, they do make a lot of water. Thanks. Thank you, Sue. Gaynor, did you have your hand up before or you're right? Right, so any further? <clears throat> oh, easy. Um, uh, Mr. Wawela. Bruce. <coughs> Uh, can you hear me? Oh, no. Now I've got a meltdown. Um, I don't know. Um, Brian. Yeah, thank you. And sorry to come back. Uh, another one that I was, because we are focused an awful lot at the moment on the single water where we're going to look at the three waters urban sewerage is to me the biggest uh, risk that as a council we have moving forward and especially with um, Naitahu's challenge to the discharge to water consent for Queenstown one of the big components for me before I, I could work out in my own mind you know and now I haven't got a clue at the moment I would want to know when those consents are due, and I know that it's impossible to get an estimate, but you know, we're dealing with 100 million, or is it north or south? 
if we could somehow please have that put into the conversation. We've got to know how important this, um, this uh, objection to discharge to water is, because that could be an absolute game changer and far outweigh any risk that anything's happening in, in water. The surge is the danger one. Uh, Bruce Fall Wheeler, are you out there? No, he's... Right, uh, Steve and then Lloyd. Uh, thanks, Mr. Out? Chairman. Um, I'll just note that um, part of um, Councillor Volwiler's problem is he was muted as well, so he wasn't, when he was on, he couldn't speak. He's currently there now, but I'll just jump in to answer the question or ask a question around uh, that from, from the Mayor. Um, my understanding, and, and uh, Jules can just confirm for me, our uh, infrastructure strategy, the long-term plan and the 30-year investment program, um, I don't believe reflects um, the cost of um, uh, and the impact if we had to only discharge to land. I believe it's based on the best information we have at the time, but isn't based on that. So um, that's just, to, just for clarity, in the sense of what we have put in place, I understand. Um, so it would be orders of magnitude more than that, which you're asking for some sort of guesstimate or estimate, um, which we'll have to consider. And yes, I, I have noted the request from risk and assurance about um, getting that um, schedule of uh, consenting timeframes and uh, state of consents. Uh, yeah, just through you, Mr. Chairman, I'll just confirm Steve's absolutely correct. We've We've budgeted in our 30 year infrastructure strategy for significant upgrades, but continued discharge to waterways. Um, we did work in the mid 2000s, looking at discharges to land across the district. I think that would need to be revisited and redone, um, but it's significant um, volumes of storage as well as securing land areas to move to discharge to land. And in our climate, that means we need particularly large land areas for that to be successful. So. And we would have to do further work to be able to quantify that, um, but it's definitely not what's currently in our budgets at present. Right, Councillor Vowela, are you out there in cyberspace? Uh, I, I'm here, I hope you can hear me now. So yeah. my, um, one of the issues that the, um, it was government on our, on performance targets um, for our water services. We have targets of um, being able to uh, um, address um, urgent um, matters um, within an hour and such like, depending depending on the urgency of, um, of outages and such like. So I think we need to have an understanding of how they regard would regard the targets that we have and, would, um, would they have different targets to what we have? Our KPIs there, which we report on annually too. Thank you. Uh, Lloyd. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman Bruce. Um, just to go back to the discharge to land, I've just been doing a submission to the Otago Rural Policy Statement and it's in there, it's got no discharge to water um, beyond 2045. So 20 years, so that's the expectations there. Um, as re regarding the other stuff, I, want to, I think I just want to reiterate that it was, pretty, it was a good report, eh? And because it set everything out in a good and understandable way, um, even if it was a bit wordy. Um, I, think, um, I think the water, well, as far as the rural water schemes, I think John's on the money, but I think we do have to give Mr. Pragg or Mr. Bofield a lot because I, I don't think they do understand what they're dealing with. And because I think our issue seemingly may be completely different than pretty much anywhere else in the country, where I can work out. Um, another thing that I've, I've actually got 30 files. I'll see in my own three waters file now, which is all good. But the um, probably the big thing I, I, I attended the um, through a couple of days ago. On the, in the afternoon with quite a few of the mayors and things and it's probably it's all sort of become things come a bit clear for me there so the one thing that really is probably it comes back to we can talk numbers this that and the next thing all the way through but it comes to me it comes back down to the governance structure that they're 
they're doing. And I'm not too sure, like, I didn't realise that the government structure was put in place so that they don't lose their credit rating with standard and pause. So that's quite deliberately being, um, the decision making is being quite deliberately separated from the elected members. So, for, but for me, I was also very surprised at the amount, the people on the call, the uh, amount of ill feel, not ill feeling or uncomfortableness around the government structure was like pretty plain and in the breakout rooms even more plain. Um, but I think I would be like, my, my bottom line is, if we get, my bottom line is if we go, there has to be some connection back to the communities, otherwise we've just got another government department. But it's worse than a government department because we've got a government department that's enshrined in law that can't be changed without a 75% vote. And I think, I know in a lot of, there's a lot of talk around getting the representative model, how it's going to operate so that it actually has some control because the way it's sitting now, neither the local body side of the equation or the iwi side of the equation actually has any power over the end result. The only one with the power over the end result from where I'm looking is pretty much the Mata ROI and the other regulatory, regulatory people. So, but somewhere in there, we've got to get a link back to the democratic side of the local body government, I guess. So that's, I'm not exactly sure there's, there's um, lots of ideas kicked around and also noticed there's, you know, in one of the local body uh, bits of literature that was, you know, there's been, you know, they're aware that there's a lot of, a lot of angst around, around, around the structure. When I, I think we've got to be, um, I think at the end of the day, we've been around this stuff for quite a bit. We actually, we're all talking all around the edges of it all the time, rather than like getting right down to the crux of the actual matter. And I think the government structure and the actual overall idea of taking the, taking the water assets away from local body and putting it into, into, into this new government structure, we basically have no say whatsoever. Um, I think that's where, we're, I think we have to make it quite clear that we're not happy with that and we cannot support it. And I think we have to make it, make it quite clear earlier rather than later. Because what my gut feeling is that if all the councils were to make, and they are coming out now making their actions, it's gonna get, it's gonna um, put more and more pressure on for significant changes to be made um, by a government level prior to any, you know, any hard landing. So my biggest problem, my biggest fear is that we, we are talking around, we're doing that consultation, that's all good. But if we're not, if we're not sending signals out there, um, once, we, once our consultation period finishes, we may find ourselves where we, you know, tell us whether you're in or out, bang. I think we need to make, I think the local body um, industry, local body in New Zealand, actually has to listen to its members and say, there's a fair proportion of these guys are not happy with this proposal. And you got, this is not just, we're not just talking about um, working around a couple of um, water schemes in Clutha. This is the whole big idea of removing it and what effect it's going to have on the future of local bodies and why and why go through all this, you know, it's 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 quite far ranging, I see. So anyway, that's my my thoughts because I I actually think that if enough councils come out and said we're not happy with the structure, we can't support it the way it is, it needs significant changes. I think there's likely to be a worthwhile rewrite done early rather than in in my personally I'd rather be mandated in, which I think I'd like it to come up and mandate in before it's an opt-in, opt-out. I'd like to get I'd like to see enough pressure if, if the other councils are willing, if there's enough pressure for that, to give the minister the opportunity to do that before they go to an opt-in, opt-out vote. So I, I I think making your stuff here open um, this report public, I think that's a good idea. And but I think, you know, I think we need to continue um, expressing our significant concerns. You know, that's that's right. I'm not no question in particular. But the question is, I think we need to, if you're going to be, you know, on your, on your mention there, what our bottom lines are, to me, one of the definite bottom lines are, there has to be a better connection back to the community governance groups. Thank you, Brian.
You got your hand up. Yeah, thank you for that. Hey, look, I, I think, Lloyd, that uh, you were on that meeting the other day and you would have seen the passion that was coming through. I don't think um, I know of a council that isn't concerned with the structure. The grisly bit gets to, okay, then we're not happy with it. How do we put a counter proposal? And the, the zone's been working on trying to put a counter proposal forward because if you're going to have a 1.2 million people in the in the entity D, how does a district the size of Kluta with 18,000 people have an effective voice? Are we going to have 70 people on the board and everyone's backing off from that? And we're lucky in the fact that we've got Naitahu because when you get around Waikato and those central North Island ones, not only have you got a whole lot of councils, you've got a whole lot of iwi, and they all want representation. So if everyone wants the size of the entity to be big to get the critical mass, how do you take that and then still have local governments? And that to me is the biggest bugbear of the whole thing. How do we genuinely keep local control and go into a group of 1.2 million people? We don't. We either have to see one or the other, and that is the decision, the end game, the in or out one. So I don't want to head to that. But that is, I, I agree with you, that is the crux of the matter. If we lose our control, then we're in for the benefit of the entity. But if we're in the bigger entity, we have no local voice. And that's an unavoidable fact. So, um, but uh, yeah, I, I agree with you, Lloyd, and I don't think there's one council that's uh, happy with the structure. Lloyd, is, do you want to speak again or have you... Just well, you know, you know, I'll put my hand back up. You know, and I agree with you, there was a lot of disease in the room. Um, the thing that gets me, like in, the, in our southern Pakiwa, there's six, I think it's 17 councils and 16 renomers, and no, nobody's happy. So I think that message has to go back. You know, I can't, and at the end of the day, why we got four areas because, you know, this, Scotland's got the same amount of people, they've got one area. So, that, you know, it's a political or it's a, a, what's the motivation behind having the four areas? It's not, it's not financial, there's a different, because I think, you know, we have one area, which is an effective government department, you know, that should be where you get your greatest efficiencies per se, because we're basically creating four mini government departments, which, yeah, but I, I think Steve. we, so we need to actually, you know, before, I think we need to send the message loud and clear that, well, my feeling is, and I don't know about everybody else's, um, my feeling is I, I cannot support um, a change of this magnitude with no with no connection back to the community because in the end, or the local bodies, because in the end, we're the ones that are going to take the brunt of it when it doesn't work. And the last thing we want to do is to be seen to be supporting the change and then having no control over the change because we're just like, it'd be even worse than, you know, that, like, we, we're going to take it on both ends. So I think we've got to put our stick in the ground and dig it in real deep and say, this is where it is. We're not moving. But we're not going to take the front if we've got no control. Thanks. Steve. Oh, thank you. Oh, you can see I am probably pretty relatively passionate about it as well. It's time, Steve. Um, just thinking about what's all being discussed, um, Mr. Chairman, I just wondered. Um, this isn't to cut short the discussion at all, because you can you can please discuss as long as you want. But just thinking of a solution to the resolution at um, number eight, um, perhaps if I was to suggest, given the the what we have been discussing, that resolution eight was actually changed to um, a resolution to the effect that uh, the committee uh, delegates to the mayor, to his worship the mayor. Um, the um, let me just check it uh, to provide um, feedback to the government um, in, uh, by uh, 30 September. Uh, why I'd suggest that is um, it doesn't prevent um, you know a number of further conversations with all elected members um, and staff supporting that in the sense of bringing the paperwork together before the end of September. But this is also a moving feast. I can see that in the sense of um, we've still got these. The scheme meeting, for example, we've got others coming through uh, in that. And I'm just conscious that there's no formal meetings 
um, for the end of the period. So just, just to provide the authority to be able to provide feedback, then I'd suggest that we would need to, to have that, a resolution like that, just to allow us the mechanism to be able to, to put together something um, that everybody can agree to, um, but we've got a formal authority to be able to, to provide the feedback. That's all I'm suggesting. Yeah, yeah. Brian. Yeah, uh, could I throw it back, Steve, because I've got four bottom lines that we've been talking about. So we've got the concerns over the loss of local autonomy and voice, staff, respect, uh, staff retention locally, clarification for water scheme status, and the ability to have comprehensive and constructive engagement before we make our decision. Could I please, instead of me, because... Um, we're hunting as a pack here. Can we please have it that council count that council does the uh, does the um, draft and comes back to us maybe or, or let, let's hunt as a pack rather than just me on articulating those four bottom liners and if there's any others, but I do want it held back until after we have that meeting on the twenty third. We could do the other three, but especially around the rural water schemes, I wouldn't like us to have a bottom line of it gets changed when we talk to the schemes. We talk to Bayfield and Pragnall, and then you go, ah, shouldn't have really had that as a bottom line. Steve. Would you be happy with doing it from a staff perspective, Steve, than me? Um, what I was probably trying to point out, um, Your Worship, was that um, uh, that still doesn't give a... Uh, you know, if you if you do it that way, there's still no formal meeting to actually resolve to approve the um, uh, the feedback. So I was simply pointing out that um, you can still achieve all that by having you know um, uh, evening sessions with the councillors or whatever um, uh, leading up to all this. And and I can and staff can support this by you know pre-circulating the bottom lines or what it is being proposed. So you all have it, um, and Did then I you. You can still can get... I suggest, Steve, something of this magnitude that we have a special meeting on, say, the 26th or whatever it is, you know, getting near the end of the month, we've had time, a few days to ruminate on the rural water scheme, and then we come together for a special meeting where we finally put our bottom lines together, rather than... Could that uh, work? We can, we can, well, it always works, Your Worship. We can always do a, you know, the administration for a formal special meeting... Um, I just wasn't sure whether you necessarily uh, needed to, to do that, but if that's what you you want, well then we would we would have to organise to do a special meeting, notify it, and all that sort of stuff, which we can do. There is, you I, know, think, fine. I think that it's got that. This is moving fast, and my my position on it is, you know, the old record of scales moving around every day, basically. But to have the opportunity to finally nail down this. This period of September is all about our council and all other councils giving feedback to the government. If we take as much information as we can in, and if we meet as near to that finish line so that we can do the freshest up to date, most relative one that we can, it's only a Zoom meeting, guys. It's half an hour to just tick off what we're doing at the finish line instead of trying to put it together and I'm also nervous a bit knowing, knowing where I am with my tahu and chairing the zone. I'm also conscious of the compromises to where I am. Bruce. You there, Bruce for Wheeler? No, we lost him again. Uh, we'll go to Mel. Thank you. I'm just just thinking about the rural water schemes. I, I suppose all, I have a, a, a query um, in my head, and it's uh, and I know that the the current um, generation are very committed to the rural water schemes, and um, you know they've invested a lot of time and money into it. But I suppose my query is is the next generation wanting to to still commit to it in you know 20, 30, 40 years. So that that was just my that that's just a query that I have sort of in my head as to whether, you know, is this something that's sustainable for future generations to um to manage. Bruce, are you out there? 
No. Uh, yes, I am now. Can you hear me? Right. Yeah, I, I, don't think, I don't think there's a need for a formal meeting, um, perhaps in a Zoom call. I think we're probably getting enough information there. Um, I'm sorry I missed about uh, two minutes there. Um, Brian took up a lot of bandwidth then. Um, so um, I, I don't, as I, I I could go along with the suggestion that Steve made that Brian actually signs it off at the end of the month that um, we've got a lot of feedback now, I think, and we can just keep feeding back into it, into that without the necessity for a formal meeting. Um, I don't think we're going to change a lot. Um, I don't think the information that we get will change a, a lot of what we um, feel about this either. So um, I'm happy just to, perhaps meet informally just to finalise the, the wording that we send to government at the end of the month, that's all. Uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, my feeling exactly. Uh, we'll go to Lloyd and then uh, we might just hold on, eh? Oh yeah, no, I was just gonna, I'm on the other side, I guess. I think it would be unfair to put uh, the mayor in that position because he is, in a, he is in a very tricky position where he's sitting on the, on the, on, the, on the two groups and he's dealing on a daily basis with uh, the, uh, the Hiwi as well. And I also think that, you know, we've been sitting around the table saying this is probably the most important decision that we're going to make in 30 years and we're prepared to do it over a Zoom meeting or not even a Zoom meeting, pass it on. I think that's just wrong on a whole number of levels. And I think we need to come back to what we originally planned to do is as soon as we can get outside our houses, we get around that big desk at the rec centre and we talk about this and we have somebody writing it up on the board with what our remits might be going forward so that we see them being developed and we're all there in agreements and can pass them on. But this is a way, to, I, I think I think as a council, we're a long way away from even, I don't, I don't, you know, to get a consensus of opinion from the council, I think we're a bit away from that at this stage. And the only way we're going to get a true consensus is if it's all out sitting in front of us on, on a whiteboard or, or being typed up in front of us and doing it once. And I, even if even if you want to wait till after the water meeting and do it in the next couple of days after that, um, I think we owe that we owe that to ourselves and to our constituents to make sure that we're actually completely thorough on the job. I suggest that that um, that Steve and his staff compile all this feedback. And then, then closer to the date, we'd get back to us, and then we decide who who actually sends it, and whether Brian delivers it or is it done through through the council or whatever. Um, otherwise, we'd be talking about this all day and getting nowhere. Uh, Ali, well, we have, we have to make a decision. I believe whether we have a um, resolution today, because if we don't have a resolution today we actually then have to have another council meeting. So you, that's your first call. You've got to make either a resolution today or, but I, and I would also go, I believe it should probably be a special meeting because otherwise we're, um, unless we leave it open for the mayor to decide, otherwise it's preconceived before we're meeting with the rural water schemes. And as I've discussed, we, I, we actually need to be, meeting with some of the probably the urban people it's not a we're not being asked to opt in or opt out at this stage we're only being asked for some feedback but I believe we shouldn't be giving our feedback comments before we've actually listened to some of our ratepayers so I would like to see um, a special meeting organized and it has to be advertised and everything else but we've got time to do that so we come together for a special meeting to confirm what goes through. But I'll leave that for Pat Steve to comment on. Uh, Bruce Fawela. Oh, you, have you pulled your hand down? Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I'll wait. Brian. Yeah, thank you for that. I couldn't agree with Ali and Lloyd Moore. This is the biggest decision that we're going to make in 30 years and we're banging around, is it worth having a meeting over? For goodness sake, it's worth having a meeting over. And I don't want us to preempt our decisions until we, 
we've got a month and it's fast moving. So to try and move things along for you, Mr. Chairman, could I suggest um, put a recommendation up that we have a special meeting on Monday the 27th of September to confirm our directive and feedback to the government? Yep. Um, how do we go about doing this? I'll Get a second there and then see whether it will put it on the floor. That's seconded by Councillor McCall, is it? Yeah. Right. Uh, all those in favour? Aye. 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 Just, just yeah. a technical, technical matter, Mr Chairman. Sorry. <laughs> it's an extraordinary meeting and that's not a problem as a, as a separate resolution. So you can do that um, as a standalone resolution, no problem with that. And obviously you'll be amending the resolution at number eight of the main document. Yeah, exactly what you said, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> just, can I interrupt? Just, do, do you actually have to nominate a day or can you say the last week in September? That might be a good point, Stu, because the minister has time? said eight weeks, then she said 10 weeks, then she said the end of September and then the 1st of October. I don't actually know what the cutoff date is. She might surprise us with 26th of September for all I know. So, yeah, that could be a fair point. Right. Steve? Um, the uh, deadline's quite clear, Mr Chairman, that it's the end of September. Um, so that's one thing. Um, secondly, an extraordinary meeting doesn't require the same level of notice. So um, you could just simply specify that you wish to hold an extraordinary meeting before the 30th of September. And um, then um, the mayor's entitled to set that um, and that's easy enough to do. So you, you can do it by just, just amending the resolution or having a resolution that says um, that council directs that there will be an extraordinary meeting before the 30th of September um, to determine the feedback. Yep, we'll go with that, shall we? Uh, um, Do you get that, Julie? Uh, yeah, I'm getting there. <laughs> right. I'm happy, I'm happy to support that. Stewie. Oh, I'll second that if you need a second. Huh? Well, I've, got a, I've got a mover and a second already. Mia Cadogan and Councillor McCall. So now all that, did we, now we take that to a vote. So all those in favour, raise your hand. Aye. 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 Against. Um, passed. Um, rightio, so we're back to the, we're going back um, to the, res the recommendations or? Sorry, Mr Chairman, can we just, um, just from a procedural perspective, um, I wasn't sure whether Councillor Foster, for example, was against because of the time delays or lags. Um, and that, so if, if when we do it, can we just check that there's enough time for people to put hands up when you say for, and then right. putting it down and then against? I know it slows it down, but it just allows us to see if there was anybody that disagreed or. Right. And also, Steve, can we please have it that we all go down to the reaction box and raise the hand rather than waving the hand around? If we can specifically right. go down to the reaction, raise hand up and come. So then do we need? So do we need to take that vote again just to to clarify that? So I all those so. in all those in favour, um, press the hand button on your thing. Those against? No. And passed. Um, do that flip. What's that doing? Because they're lowering so, their hands. No, it's like a poking machine. Um, <laughs> yeah, right out. It's stopped. Um, so are we back to the recommendations now? Uh, yes, we are. The... <laughs> Sorry? Yes, we are, Bruce. Councillor right. Graham. <laughs> Thank you. So, Mr um, Chief, can we, can we can remove um, recommendation eight um, now that it's covered. Um, and we don't have to do anything with that because we can do that by the end of the month as you've just asked for. Um, and then the rest could flow because they're quite procedural all at once. Right, so do I have someone who's willing to move 
recommendations one, two, 11 without recommendation eight. Is that you, Ellie? Seconded by Dane. Is that right? Uh, all those in favor, any discuss further discussion? No, all those in favor? Do your wee hand thing. Ah, oh, come on, hurry up. Those against? No, um, passed. Right, we'll go on to, where are we? Two. Item number two on page. Um, Bruce, just before you move on, this is Lord yet? Yeah. yeah. On the goal, follow the hand up. Um, do we need to see it though? I'm just following on from where Ellie was. Do we need to see the date to have like a, you know, to take it to the wider community, not just water groups meetings prior to that extraordinary meeting? The, the, and this, also this thoughts on whether we have, have the opportunity to rise is to have a, a um, not a workshop, we didn't need to like, have, a, have a blackboard session. Right. Uh, Brian. Yeah, Lloyd, it's our intention that as soon as we get out of this and down to level two, that we should, and also will be, well, my hope is that we would be reinvigorating our information sessions with the communities, not just the water schemes. But I think it's going to be real hard to get much done before the end of the month. But I do think a good idea for us to have a, another round the table session. I'd love to do it as soon as we can. Right. So we're all happy there. John. Just wondering through you, Mr Chairman, if Brian's had any response back from the Minister to read his letter for extending the period. He no, moves off, Brian. To the best of my knowledge, no one's had a response. I certainly haven't seen one from Otago Southland, and I don't think Canterbury or... There's quite a few letters with slightly different iterations to them went out from all around the country, but to the best of my knowledge, there's been no reaction. Councillor Finch. Thank you. Um, so you've sorted out the date for rural. What about, as Ali suggested, something for the urban, a meeting to go through it all with them? We had hoped to do the rounds gainer, and that'll still be our intention when we get out of uh, lock level three to start organising, but it's not going to be, um, you know, to, uh, our, our thoughts were that we'd go around all the town halls. It's not going to get thrown together in two minutes, but it will get thrown together as quick as it can. All happy with that? Go to um, item number two, which is a uh, Item for information, the organisational performance report. Uh, Jules, do you want to run us through that, please? Thank you, Mr Chairman. I think the first thing to note is that the, only the July information has the full month. Uh, the August information is a part month. Um, and it's interesting to note that even though it's only a month and a half, we're still up to um, about 800 service requests, with um, the majority at this stage being in the, in the roading area. Uh, but that's why August is down because it's only for part of the month. Um, obviously, still work ons. The main ones are the three waters, which there's a whole lot of work going on with the contractor in that area. Uh, in terms of the the response, um, the the customer contacts are looking pretty good. But obviously, we need to get the resolutions up and work with the contractor to do that, which is ongoing with our uh, water contractor. Happy to take uh, any further questions through you, Mr. Chair. Councillor Cowie. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, how are you going, Jules? I just see later on uh, Henry's report about the mess on one of the, I presume it's on Clutha Valley Road, Tars Hill Road. Did that come about as a result of service request or just staff observations? 
Um, I'm more than happy to leave that for Henry to answer when we get to his report, because I'm sure there'll be a bit of discussion about those at that point in time. But um, if Henry's there, he may be able to answer that now for you, and we, we can oh, no, discuss I'll, it. I'm happy, oh, I'm happy to wait. I just wanted to raise okay. it out of curiosity. Thank you. Yep. Not, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Henry may know. He may not at this stage. Thank you. It gives him time. Councillor Herbert. Thank you. And through you, Mr. Chairman, just to Jules, do we have a specific date, Jules, when the green space, when the, the mowing starts, whether each particular year? Um, the, 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 there's no specific date, Councillor Herbert. The, uh, my understanding is that it's, uh, I mean, I, I know what the contract requires. It's a performance based contract, which requires the contractor to keep the the, um, the grass heights within a certain standard. And one of the issues with that is whenever we're in the spring time frame, is ground conditions do limit when, when the mowers can get on the grounds. They can make a huge mess. And there's always a fine balance between getting on the grounds um, on the mowers. Uh, and keeping it within that time frame, and there's usually a bit of catch up. So, if the ground conditions are okay, um, they'll be mowing early. Uh, otherwise, they'll be catching it up when they can, and things dry out a wee bit. So, um, you can, by all means, certainly ask Henry what the plans are for mowing. Um, but it, it, there is always a, a balance between um, damaging the grounds and mowing in that transition between winter and spring. Thank you. Uh, if there's no further questions, do I have someone who willing to? Um move the recommendation on page 25 that the service delivery committee receives the organizational performance report uh, councillor Feltz seconded by councillor Cowie all those in I also favor, have another uh, question oh, yeah councillor Cowie um, on page 26 Jules um, the the second graph you said the comment was 805 service requests. Those numbers don't. So where the what were the rest of them? What are they? Something else or? Uh, Julie might be able to confirm that. But um, anyway, just yeah. Just point. But I'm happy to second it. <laughs> they may be the total for the whole of the organisation. Sorry, I'm not sure. You. Yes, yes, they are. They are they're for regulatory and for service delivery. So across the two departments. I probably shouldn't use the, I should probably select titles for just for our department next time. That's probably a glitch on my part, sorry. That's okay. So any further discussion? Uh, Councillor McCall. Oh, what's happening here? Sorry, I was on mute. Page 28, the three winners resolutions and 20, and then oh, I just told them, they just seem really low to me, the three, the, um, I was wondering why they were so low, to be honest. Um, we, we, simple fact is they're not meeting the resolution timeframes, Councillor McCall. Uh, the, the rural water do does need to be reviewed because um, some of the timeframes are probably not appropriate for the, um, for, for, for what we're expecting with the extent of our network. Um, but that's certainly an area that's been highlighted and requested that the contractor improve. Um, and, that, and, they've, and, and they're putting, they've made some changes in terms of not doing other capital work to focus on improving their timeframes. And yet we're still waiting to see the, the results of that work. Um, I would like to add on a few more items. Um, the last month uh, was quite a bit tough because of the snow and uh, uh, rain and then it is it was uh, difficult to um, handle some of the leaks um, in a mobile flat and um, North Bruce and um, Balmoral 1 and 2. So they all had a bit of difficulty of meeting that uh, deadline on those part as well. So oh, Jules, that, that'll be why the resolutions are running below the response times. Does that make sense to me? The, it's the contract of this. Um, they're two independent measures. The um, the response time frame is when they're on site, and the resolution is when they've completed it. So, right. and they have two different sets of targets that they have to meet for those. So, response is initial response to the issue, and then resolution is there's a different time frame to go and fix it. So, obviously, a, a sewer overflow has got a, a time a time frame in terms of hours, and a, a minor rural water leak has got a time frame in days. So, depending on what the issue is. 
there's different times that they're measured against in terms of um, compliance with the contract requirements. Yeah, thank, thank you, Jules. Councillor Cowie. No, I'll just read a vote. <laughs> right. Did we move that? Did I move that? We'll so yes, through like you, you have a councillor's Phelps and Cowie. Oh, starting to sound like Tim Shadbolt. Um, <laughs> all those in favour? Um, pressure we, Pam. Uh, that looks like it's unanimous. Um, those against? No. Uh, that resolution is passed. We'll now move to page 30, which is another item for information. It's a group manager's update. Um, service delivery, Jules, can you run us past this one, please? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm happy to take the, the item as read. The only um, other bit I do want to add too is that um, I, I had meant to get an update in here regarding the Hospital Creek Embankment. Uh, Evelyn, uh, our project, senior project engineer, is going to be working on that. We've appointed a contractor for doing the tendering and uh, engagement and writing the contract documents for that. Uh, sorry, a consultant. It's a geotech engineer who originally provided the advice. Um, we do have a draft agreement from the Regional Council, which effectively confirms our original understanding of that, which was um, it is a Clutha District Council asset uh, and that we will work with them on maintenance because there is an interface with the flood bank, but we'll bring that back to, to the Council for confirmation. Uh, and the intention is to have that ready and let. At the moment, the ground conditions are too wet to do any work there. The intention is to have that contract let and be ready to go as soon as we can when ground conditions improve in the late spring and summer for that work to be uh, undertaken. We did have a whole lot of work and discussion with the Regional Council about how that will be managed in the interim. So we do have procedures in place if we do have a rainfall event uh, and we do have a, an undertaking that it, we will still be considered for NEMA funding uh, if we can get that uh, construction done straight away and get that through with a claim with the Regional Council. Um, but obviously we need to get on with that work and get that done um, as soon as we can, as soon as ground conditions permit. Uh, and updates in the future will be included in the capital delivery report uh, via Evelyn. So happy to take any questions through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Councillor Feltz. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just a question on the colleague Paul Jules. Um, how did that meeting went? Was there progress made on um, moving forward? Yeah, we definitely. Uh, thank you, Councillor Feltz. Through you again, Mr. Chairman. I've I met uh, with the group on site before lockdown. Uh, they've done a lot of work and pulling pipes out and cutting concrete and getting ready for repairs, um, which uh, they're, they're pretty confident they've found the source of a lot of the water leaks. Um, I'm, so there's a few work a few actions out of that meeting that I'm waiting for them to come back on. And one of them is that they have agreed that it would be a really good idea to have a sort of a 10 year plan of what capital costs are coming up for the pool, which we've done for other community pools. Uh, and then they can look at what they can do there. We've also put them in touch with the Owaka pool committee and they're going to go down and have a look at them, what they're doing there and have a discussion with them about the work they're doing uh, with, with the aim to be forward planning what any capital upgrades they want to do with the pool. And the other one, which will enable them to get going this season, um, they're doing working up some cost estimates for the repairs for the work they've already started and what they need to finish for that. Uh, and that will enable them to get underway. I took the opportunity since I was down there as well to have a discussion with them about the trees on site. Uh, and we've, there was an arborist um, already arranged during lockdown, which obviously couldn't go ahead under level four. Uh, and as before the arborist arrives, there's another just quick meeting with, uh, with Joyce Beck and with the pool committee to confirm which trees they really want gone and which ones need a bit of maintenance. Um, and then we can focus the arborist in on those uh, when he comes to have a look. Now we're at level three, that should be able to be organised relatively quickly. So quite a bit of progress made and a, a good discussion with the group. Thank you. Well done. Councillor Foster, followed by Councillor Cowie. Thank you. I just uh, was wanting an update on my Pori Falls, if there's anything to report on that. Um, I, Mayor Cadogan may be able to provide a bit of an update on this too, but I have um, had some discussions with the chairman of the body corporate, uh, as well as 
um, MP Ingrid Leary, and I know Brian, uh, Mia Cadogan's also had correspondence with them. Um, the, the general consensus from the discussions we had is that there are definitely issues to be resolved, and um, we're intending to work through them with the, the appropriate body corporate managers and the body corporate uh, chairman, um, as well as concerns raised by by other residents. So um, happy to happy to defer to Mia Cadogan for, for further updates on that. Uh, yeah, not so much an update, but look, it's going to be ongoing and there's, uh, there's so many issues to work through there. I was just wondering, I'm not sure whether it's you, Mal, or whether it's the Milton Ward councillors, what ward does Wapori Falls fall into? Anyone know? I'm pretty sure you told it, you, you had great delight in telling it, telling me oh, it was oh, me. Oh, yes, it's a, to a peg of Lawrence. <laughs> I was like, only teasing you, Mel. I didn't know for sure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, just because uh, uh, ongoing discussions, and it is quite confrontational at times, it would be quite good if, if there was some council support there as well, um, because it's not going to be an easy task to work through. And it, to me, it's a microcosm of what we're looking at around three waters. You know, they see that they've got an asset and they want to know how much council is going to pay for that asset. I don't quite see it that way. So there is quite a bit to work through. But it would be great if we had council support. Yeah, I well, didn't know it, about the meeting, so, yeah. Well, when's that meeting, sorry? Uh, the meeting the next they had one a while ago. get out of lockdown. Oh, right, right. Uh, Bruce Fawira. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, look, I'm happy to be um, involved in those meetings if um, wanted. And also, I just perhaps we should point out to them it may not be an asset they have, but a liability. Okay. Uh, any further questions? If not, do I have someone who's prepared to move the recommendation on page 30? that the Service Delivery Committee receives a Group Manager's Update Report. Um, move. Moved, uh, Councillor Herbert, seconded Councillor Sutherland. All those in favour, do your wee yellow hand thing. And that looks, again, it's unanimous. Um, those against? No, uh, passed. We'll move on to page 32. Just through you, Mr. Chairman, just to confirm, I've just double checked our online maps, and it's it's close to the boundary, but it is in the Lawrence Tupika ward in terms of the uh, Waipori Falls village itself. So um, it, oh, it, it is close yeah. to the boundary, but clearly on the on the uh, northern side, which is the Lawrence Tupika ward. Why has Councillor Wheeler got the thumbs up there? Um, page thirty-two is another item for information. It's Operation Update, Transportation and Facilities. Uh, Henry, uh, can you run us through this, please? Yes, I think the report is head. Um, the intention from my side was just to give um, the greater drivers some exposure, because for us it's uh, quite a big, important part of our network. And, and we, not a lot of people know that my father used to be a greater driver, so it's close to my heart. And then uh, for Council Curry's question, I just spoke to Graham Hill now and um, applied well mud. Um, it came across as our inspection and the contractor's inspection. So that's how we knew about that one. And then just to highlight the, um, the, the effort that we put into um, the cleaning in the swimming pools and the filters there. So that's a good before and after photos of the filters that we found there. And then just with the community housing, so we're efforting to um, getting it up to the standards. So there's some good photos to show what we're about and what we're doing in that space. Um, yeah, happy to take any questions. Thank you, sir. Uh, greater source would have been my choice, uh, Henry. Um, Councillor Cowie. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, through you, can I ask, Henry, so that, that mess, I presume that's on Clutha Valley Road because I was. I hope that the whoever's property it is, they get sent the bill for the cleaning. Does that happen? Well, you chair, yes, we have that mechanism. And the last time I spoke to the team about that, we said in process um, to hand in the bill because we keep a careful eye on what was uh, the cost involved to clean it up. 
So we have that's the intention of the program to do that. Thank you. Councillor Sutherland. Yeah, you, Carol. I was actually going to ask the same question about whether they got charged, but as and thank you. But as well as that, um, I see Good Hands Property and Better Property um, complete the healthy homes assessment. Have we got no one on staff that can do that? Yeah, so um, it's got a specific and a specialised um, assessment that needs to be done. So that's why we decided to use those two um, companies to help us out there. So it's quite specialised, so that's why we decided in those two companies to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Ludeman. Just in regards to the swimming pool, um, now that once the pool gets open again, will we be on the new airs with open all that all weekend, all day on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday? Thing, which is, uh, I think there won't be a change in, in the hours of the previous Sorry, it's just really hard to um, hear you, Henry. Are you able to, I don't know, get a bit closer to the microphone or something? Yes, yes, it will be close. It will be exactly the same hours as it was before it was closed. Well, what I, no, what I'm asking is under the long term plan, the new airs were meant to be all day Saturday and Sunday open. Saturday morning, which it hasn't been previously, and not closing over the lunch break on a Sunday. So I'm just checking if that will be happening when the pool reopens. I think um, I spoke to Stephen, that's the full intention because we have a, a little bit of a shortfall in staff to cover that for us, but we're working towards that as, as we uh, open and open all the lunch time as well. Yeah. So, so sorry. That's, so it won't be happening straight away? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, if, it, if it's not, um, if the staff isn't available to cover us, then it, it will not be, but the intention is there to definitely get us onto that. Okay. okay, so just a timeline, I guess, as to when that will happen. Yeah. yeah. yeah Councillor Catherwood, you got your hand oh, up. Yeah. yeah, through you, Chair. Um, just to Henry, just as a program under Alert Level 3, Continuing with uh, metal application and grading, are we are we still normal? Are we normally performing with our maintenance of our rural roads here? Yes, sir. No, a um, minute past twelve last night. The team were quite into it, so yeah, no full steam ahead for us. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, any further questions? If not, do I have someone who will? Um, Move the recommendation on page 32 that the service delivery committee receives the operations update, transportation and facilities report. Uh, move Councillor Foster, seconded Councillor Thompson. All those in favour, push the button. Those against, uh, moved. Uh, I mean, yeah, passed. We'll now go on to page 41, which is another item for information, the operations update, water and waste. Um, Tiago, can you run us through this, please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, uh, the only update I'm going to give you is that um, the bulk luther water leak has been fixed now. And then we had a further leak on the valve that is fixed as well. And then um, there are a few uh, wastewater treatment plant upgrades, um, like uh, media removal has been completed. And uh, the Milton water treatment plant chlorine room is now upgraded. So I'm in the process of getting it certified um, um, sooner. Uh, those are the few updates from the report, but I'm happy to take any further questions on the report. Councillor Sutherland. Uh, fluoride, what how far ahead are we with fluoride, please? Um, fluoride project has been awarded to um, the contractor who already ordered the parts. Um, as far as I know, there is a three-month uh, delivery time. 
because it's coming from Australia. And then, yeah, they ordered to make. Um, so they're all done. Uh, the, the proposed uh, timeline is Bakhluta to be done by end of this year. And uh, early next year, January will be Milton and Tapnui and uh, um, other one, Kaitangata will be done in February. Thank you. Thanks for French. Come on. No, you just muted that, Gainer. You mute? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're muted now. Yeah. Right, sorry. Um, did you say the Milton um, surge treatment plant has all been up to standard, everything's been fixed that needed fixed? I said uh, Milton uh, water treatment plant. Uh, which oh, the is water treatment. Yeah, there is a concern uh, raised by the um, contractor about health and safety on the chemical and chlorine room, the, especially the chlorine room is not certified. Um, so um, to get the certification, mm -hmm. only thing we need is a fire um, rated building, which has been completed over the lockdown. And uh, Steve has approved as essential service, which made it easier to complete that work. And that's now, um, there are only minor works needs to be done on that part. And then, but I spoke to the certifier who said today, later this afternoon, and uh, that it can be certified uh, without any issues. And um, so, yeah. Great, that's great to hear, thank you. Councillor Catherwood, followed by Phelps, and then Mia Cadogan. Thank you through you, Chair. Um, just see, are we um, still rotary hoeing those um, beds on the, the media beds on those biofiltros? I see it's up for replacement. Which, um, are we replacing the, uh, the whole media or just that top layer? Uh, we are replacing the top 400 mil um, layer, which is yep. every about one and a half years. And the reason why we did it because it was uh, ponding all the time. And yeah. then they couldn't rotary hoe it uh, for the last two months, especially the wet months. So uh, we waited for the right opportunity, weather and pound level and everything. So it was perfect last week. So we got it uh, done, Owaka. So the yeah. next week will be a KP. And then we are looking into Tapanui and Lawrence as well. But we might be looking into replacing the whole media. Uh, we haven't made the decision yet. We have to talk to ORC as well. The reason is, the bed, um, we, we, we have attempted a leak repair in uh, Lawrence. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't resolve it um, because the leak is coming from the bottom. And then we need to remove the whole media to fix the leak, um, which means that um, we have to remove, I mean, we, we replace the whole media. And also we are in a situation that uh, do we replace with the sawdust or other type of media? So there's a whole lot of work going on at the background on that part. Um, but for Owaka and KP was in a plan for almost a five months, and that's been completed now for Owaka. Thank you. Councillor Felt. Uh, thank you. Just through the chair, just like, like to two things. Uh, firstly, comment on the addition of the photos in the last couple of reports. I think it's been, you know, it, it just gives you a bit more of an understanding of where things are at. Um, I think you know, just a wee thank you for the addition of that. But just regarding the uh, the bridge leak, the water leak, was that just a, a seal that had gone over time? Or does anyone know? Or are we going to have problems in the future? Or is it just a an age thing? Or does anyone know? Um, it is um, uh, through you, Mr. Chair. This is the uh, the coupler, the Gibbold, um that was gone hold one. Uh, I mean, it's original one. Obviously, it's corroded and uh, got into leak. So um, that has been replaced with the leak lamp now uh, with the wrap around it. So is there like uh, not any more to, to go? We did we did um, hear from a contractor that pipe is in a, a bad conditions as well. Um, we need to start uh, thinking about a replacement program um, as well. For they those that, that don't understand what a gibble joint is, it has a couple of big O-rings in it. 
So yeah. there's every possibility that they may have been purist or something like that, I would think. Uh, Mayor Cadogan. Thank you, Mr Chair. If I could just go to page 45, 3.4, inflow and infiltration target. There's obviously a direct correlation between compliance issues and the infiltration issues that we also have. But I don't, when I, when the public gives you feedback, it's always jippo about going on the sections and the like. What information do we give to the public uh, before we go and inspect the individual town? Um, so we do a, a, a letter drop, um, which we have done for Owaka and Tapnui. Uh, Milton was a mess. I think we did do Milton letter drop too, if I'm not wrong. Uh, but it's it's going to be a massive work for Balkluta, but it may be possible. We, we might still going to do it. But we did also advertise in a local newspaper as well. Um, so we we there is about a couple of pages of report that have a very detailed why we are doing it and why uh, what we are doing it and what is the implications and all the stuff. And also there is a website um, updated at the moment with a full link which we will put that link in a letter drop or anything, any letter that we sent as well. So there is a whole lot of communications happening at the background, um, but still we get a few calls saying, oh, you never told us, um, you know, uh, because it's because, <laughs> I mean, sorry, sorry to say, but they might not have read it, um, the letter drop, yeah. Do we put, uh, do you think we could do a focus district wide or urban district wide in the next rates letter? Um, we did uh, advertise in a um, Kluta leader as well. So, um, I mean, um, other, other, I, I'm not sure what else the other option we can do. Uh, we can do Facebook advertisement or something. I will start thinking about it because we do have a lot of information in the website now. It's uh, going to be pretty easier to do that social media advertisement. Um, yeah, we can do that. Uh Mama. Councillor Herbert. Yeah, thanks. My, mine actually flows on from that, Tiago. Um, yeah, so at the end of 3.4, you say letters have been sent out to a whacker in Tapanui. So I'm presuming that's a letter telling people they've got a problem. Is that right? Uh, that is correct. We only tell the people who have a problem. Uh, if they don't have a problem, they don't get letter uh, because it's just admin work. <laughs> so, the, so the 47 people with a downpipe directly into the sewer and they receive a letter, do we give them a specific time frame when that is to be fixed by? Yes, we do have a three months time frame that we did uh, provide, but um, there are some people contacting us saying, look, we are in lockdown now, especially Tapanui one recently, um, can we provide a more extended timeline, which is fine, I mean, uh, because it's uh, reasonable. And also all the Tapanui people are contacting us saying, look, we have a um, um, the only one plumber, uh, Barry Mundro got few jobs as well. Uh, they all are not available until December or something. And then they, they, they do uh, really respond very positively, which is what we um, yeah, appreciate it. And then, um, and then few people's already fixed it. Uh, in fact, we received uh, photos and signs that, that have been fixed, uh, okay. which, is, which is good to hear. Councillor yeah, so Cowie, Followed by Finch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, through you, um, Tiago, the Waterhuna Water Treatment Plant, there was some talk about putting a, a leaf screen to stop the problems of willow leaves going through the um, through the filters. Can you give me an update on that, please? Um, yes, uh, uh, through your chair. Uh, we have um, done a few uh, temporary works in the um, in the last year uh, it worked in a capacity um, but there isn't any permanent solution being developed the the two main reasons uh, one is it's required a major work and um, that we have explored how deep we can go um, into the pipeline uh, like a like a sorry the bed uh, it wasn't that deep. Um, so the basic, um, there's a, we only got two other options. One is to move the intake to the different locations and then our upgrade with a big uh, screen, which is, uh, which is we're not investing that much, especially um, the site gonna be uh, abandoned in a couple of years time. So we are looking um, kind of temporary solutions 
um, um, <laughs> sort of things moving the pipeline not too far, but without investing major um, uh, money on it. Uh, so there is a, there is definitely something going on before the next autumn leaves. Um, yeah. That's good. Th thank you. Um, I'll give you a call after the meeting, if that's all right. Cheers. No, that's all right. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Finch, followed by Councillor McCall. Thank you. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jules, you might remember this. Milton was done about six, seven, eight, nine years ago, and there was a lot of infiltration and inflow found then. Were they not all fixed at the time? And surely the new houses wouldn't be hooked up straight down through now all the builders and plumbers would know that you can't do that. So why did Milton have to be done again, please? Uh, so yeah, through you, Mr. Chairman, Milton was its actually about 13 years ago when Milton was done, so it's quite a while. Um, there, there was a lot of things fixed, so hopefully we aren't going to find as many um, this time around, but Milton still does have a very high rate of inflow and infiltration. So, uh, and not all of those things were fixed. What we have found is that um, while we did follow up with people afterwards, a lot of them just left it. Um, and it was when they come to sell their house that uh, they were still a notice on their property file um, with drainage issues to fix is when they actually dealt with them. Um, so so we, we're going to have another look, another set of eyes. And um, because Milton still has a significant eye and eye problem, um, it's definitely worth going over it again, and, and hopefully it's not as much as before. But um, I'm, so I'm still sure there'll be lots of things that are found. Okay, thanks for that. So then does this teach us that um, our follow-up has not been as good as it could or should be? We had considerable follow-up. We actually employed someone to follow up. Um, and that's why with this time part of the process, once the initial I and I and I inspections, um, we, there is going to be that um, follow up process. And if we have to, uh, we might have to look at enforcement action to get those remedied uh, once we've given people a, a reasonable period of time and even more than the three months to make sure that um, they've, they've had an ample opportunity to get it fixed. So that's certainly something we'll be looking to follow up with this time um, with, with our I and I project. Uh, Councillor McCall. Please, thank you, through uh, Chair to Tiago. A um, couple of things, um, Tapanui. So the, the ones that are unknown, further investigation required, are they, do they get letters to that effect? Um, not at this stage. Uh, we want to send them a letter only when once we identify the issues. So those people who get the letter is mostly the one that we already identified, which is a down pipes directly connected to sewer and gully dishes non-compliance. And then unknown, um, that's where we are looking into getting like some stock smoke testing and stuff like that. Obviously we'll inform them that we're gonna be doing a further investigation with the letter drops, but um, it is, um, we're not doing it now yet because of the resource and that is one to get every town done before we go on to do the other uh, areas. So those unknowns will be our next focus once we finish the whole towns, um, I mean, every town, 11 in total, I think. Um, so once that's been done, they will go back to that uh, unknowns. Uh, it's just the resource um, planning. We try to get some plumbers to do it, but they were not many interested to doing this because it's not a big job for them. Yeah, uh, thanks, Jago. Seemingly, um, where I am currently is one of the number 47. So, um, which may not be all that good, but I understand if you email into the council, you'll send details of what issues are in pictures. Is that correct? No, we are at the moment only advising the, um, whether there is a um, um, problem or not. And then uh, we are telling them to contact us where the problem is. And then, then we can explain. The main reason is that there is a heaps of photos and uh, quite a lot of um, uh, work. It's uh, administrative work um, and it's gonna take a, a whole lot of time. And uh, that's the main reason why we're trying to minimize it in a one paper and send the letter out. And also it's gonna get delayed if you're pulling out all the information and sending it out. So we wanna get it done, send out the letter and then the person contacting us if they need more information. But some people, they don't need more information. They can easily find the problem straight away. Um, 
that's the idea behind it. But um, more than happy to if if you <laughs> if you need your details per particular your property. But one thing we did add a um, understanding from the Tapnui inspection is that we have about sixteen letter that has been sent to the wrong owner. And uh, so we are fixing it at the moment. Um, that's probably one of the reasons why you may not have get it. Uh, or, um, yeah, um, I need to go and con completely. This is because of the database that was um, the letter database. Sorry, the address database that we got was like uh, four years ago. It's a, it's an error from uh, our site. And that's why that sent to the wrong. Um, um, I, I mean, that's been fixed at the moment. But yeah. I, but 16, 16 of them, it wasn't too bad, but still, uh, that's been no, fixed. That's all fine. No, that's all fine. There's been a couple of people on there who actually have contacted you guys and found uh, they got information back, which they're pretty happy about. Yeah. I know my own office down here was built. It's, it's actually a bank. It was built probably, I think it was built in the 1970s. So gosh knows, I don't even know where the sewer is, well, I, where my pipes yeah. come, go, come and go to. That's another story. Oh, totally understandable. <laughs> Yeah, and I've got another question. Another this question is around the Clinton and why the water treatment, the I mean, the wastewater treatment plants. So, see, is that one? Because see here that you're procuring, procuring plants for wetland replantation in Clinton. Does that mean that are you going through like a wetland field with your wastewater there? Yeah, so we have a two treatment system that has the wetland as a part of the treatment. It was issued, the consent was issued in 2003. Uh, one is Waihala, another one is uh, um, Clinton. So they both have a um, final polishing step as a wetland to remove some nitrogens. Um, in, 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 in our experience so far, uh, we never really achieved it. Um, we argued against that with the um, with the um, uh, ORC, uh, whatever regional council. It's a little bit of back and forth between them, but it's part of the consent. And and they were saying, no, no, you're gonna achieve it. Okay, so that's why we are getting a um, bit of uh, help on um, what plan that we wanted to put in um, to get the right uh, planted, and then um, and then our consultant that we uh, worked with as well saying this should be achievable. And then uh, they are suggesting to have a wetland. Uh, yeah, it is part of the consent. That's where the trouble has started um, that we need to uh, plant it. Um, so, you've got, it so your comes, measurements are basically saying at this stage it's not working as you'd like it to. Yeah, region, it wasn't region. working. It wasn't working as we liked in the past. Yeah. And we're going to be putting a new one with the, I mean, different plants maybe. And that's what we are working with. Um, but um, yes, the, the main reason why we are implanting it is basically because of the consent requirement. We sounds, can't uh, not to do that. Sounds like you need some miscanthus. Um, we, we got a guy from Sinking Wetlands. We've done the planting recently. Um, oh, brilliant. Happy, uh, yeah, Glenn Riley. Yeah, so we've been in touch with them. Uh, oh, I'll tell, them to tell you. Uh, okay, I'll give you a ring then. <laughs> yeah. If you have a few complaints about them, uh, good. Oh, no, no, Glenn is very, he's excellent, mate. But this is, yeah, I'm just interested to see what you're finding. That's all, but yeah, yeah. maybe looking at we'll outside the meeting. Yeah, hello, right, uh, guys. Can we, um, um, what Councillor Fouts? Uh, thank you through the chair. Uh, Thiago, I'd just like to comment on Tapanui. Um, I see you found a lot of, uh, lot of leaky manholes. Would you have a, a indication on how many? And, and also, is there no sort of schedule for them to be checked like yearly or, um, or, or whenever? Uh, I guess, you know, is there no schedule for them to be looked at every now and again? This is what I'm trying to ask. Um, in the contract, there is about 10% of the manual that need to be checked every year. And uh, this manual wasn't picked up. Um, we have been asking them to do the whole lot of manual through the uh, stimulus funding as well. But they came, the contractor came back to us and say they don't have resources to do it. And also um, this manual, if you go to do it in a March, and it would be um, it would be dry. <laughs> uh, it needs to be inspected on the right time too, um, because of the high groundwater level. 
and uh, it is difficult to inspect without going inside the manual. The only the inspection is from the top, um, and then you would know if you do it in October now. Now you would say, yeah, that's a water level coming through. But if you do it in March, you wouldn't see anything. So you would probably take it. It's good, but <laughs> in reality, it's not good. So uh, the main reason why we did this inspection is because we got a overflow going at Tapanui Pond. So we have got a couple of guys now and the new resources that we have. So we got them to go and uh, look out on the site and then they um, they pick this whole area. And the same thing happened in Oaka. I mean, uh, counselor um, uh, would know a lot about that, what happened in Oaka. So it, because it goes through his property. So we had a, a <laughs> we had a break in the creek. So they picked up, we are working at the moment to fix that pipeline as well. I mean, it's great to see that that issue has definitely helped. So are you saying uh, other areas have been checked as well? You talked about it. What about Milton? Have they been, you know, it could be an issue there as well. Break. Um, sorry, Mr. Uh, did you mean that Milton has been checked? No, the Milton hasn't been checked yet. And um, yeah, like I said, it's really resources. At the moment, we are doing a reactive um, on that part, particularly on the manual. Uh, we are trying to get contracted to uh, line up to do the inspection of the full district wide. Um, is just because they're not, resourcing is not available. Um, all this Tapnui and Oakai was a reactive inspection rather than a, um, the pre planned one. Um, so, the Milton, that's the one you said Milton hasn't been done. Thank you. Well, I'm a bit wary of the time that we've still got two more meetings to go. Um, Councillor Cowie. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to move the recommendation on page 41. Very good. And do we have a seconder? Uh, Councillor Foster. Um, just before that, uh, Councillor McCall, you had your hand up. No, sorry, I was still lingering from last time. All right. But I saw no further discussion. <clears throat> All those in favour, uh, put your wee yellow hands up. Those against? No, uh, that's motions. But uh, Councillor, you still got your hand up, Councillor McCourt. Right. Uh, that's passed. So we'll go back to. We'll go forward to, we won't go back, we'll go forward to page 47, which is another item for information. It's an infrastructure strategy update. Uh, ben, are you out there? Yeah, yep, yeah, I'm here. Hi, everyone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, right. Right. Come on, Ben, we want a close up, please. Oh, <laughs> leave it at the moment. Oh, look, it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, I'll um, take the report as read and happy to answer any questions. Right. Uh, uh, Councillor Cowie. Thank you. Well done. Please, the baby looks like her mother. Um, <laughs> hey, just, just a wee question about the... Um, oh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I, I, I guess it's still up for discussion, Ben. Oh, page 48 about the uh, housing projects, these new builds. My yes. question really, and it's just a general question, it, it's, it's what sites? Because to me, I always thought like a new build preferably should be on a new site or beside new buildings. Um, new beside old will cause some issues, but you may have a comment on it. I've just, it's just something I've been thinking about. Yeah, so they, the two, the Milton Waihola ones are sort of like a, um, a blank site. Um, one of the previous updates that I put around did have the sites identified but I can find that again and send it through to you, Stu, if you want. Thank you. Any further questions of Ben? If not, uh, do I have someone prepared to move the recommendation on page 47 that the Service Delivery Committee receives the Infrastructure Strategy Update Report? Um, Stuart 
Councillor Cowie, seconded by Councillor Fouts. All those in favour? <laughs> yeah, those against? Well, that looks like it's past two. So, right, let's move forward to page 50. Another item for information, the capital delivery update. Um, Jerry, can you run us through this, please? Okay, Mr. Chairman, councillors, uh, I'll take my report as read, but happy to take any questions. Uh, uh, Councillor Herbert. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. Hey, just on obviously 3.5 for me, Jerry, the Glen Kinnick treatment upgrade with our present condition. Um, have we got a, a, are they stalled or, you know, like parts coming? bits arriving, people on site, that sort of stuff. Are we looking at a later? I think initially it was going to be a Christmas completion. How likely is that looking? Uh, still looking reasonably likely. Uh, well, I, I think agree that's, that's not true. Sorry. Um, oh. I'd probably best to update on this one. Um, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I've been keeping the... Um, the Rural Water Scheme Committee updated on this. There's been an extra delay on the membrane filtration racks. So originally they were ordered back in January um, with a 26 week wait. Um, there's now an extra 10 to 12 weeks on those. Um, so they are, I've, I had a meeting with uh, the contractor last week and they are looking at establishing site by the end of September um, the original completion to produce water was sort of by end of November this year. Um, it's now looking more likely that's going to be sort of late January, February, just due to these extra delays. So the scheme, the scheme's aware of that, are they, Ben? Scheme committee yes, scheme. yes, they are. Yeah, I've been talk, um, in uh, communication with Richard Pearce regarding that. Thank you. Councillor Cowie. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through you, are, the, are you guys um, I just see here that the, the contract's been finished, so my question now, that scheme, North Richardson, should have extra uh, water available for sale with the increased capacity that this new pipe was going to allow. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, there is the there is capacity in the pipe. There is not necessarily capacity back at the treatment plant. Right. Uh, th there are a couple of items in the treatment plant that are getting close to their limits. This is new treatment plant. Sorry, hang on. Um, Jerry, oh, you, ben, you, can, ben oh. can you provide an update oh, on that? This is the Whiteley I... Road one, sorry. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. North, North Richardson, Jerry, not South Richardson. Right, okay. Right, yes, no, that, that part of the scheme will have um, yeah, more capacity in it. Um, but just to clarify through you, Mr. Chairman, it may need um, reticulation upgrades to supply it depending on where the customers are, Councillor Cowie, which is like uh, a lot of schemes. There may need to be reticulation upgrades further out in the scheme depending on where the demand is. Yeah, th hey, thank you, Jules. And I'm, I'm specifically thinking of Jacks Hill Road. Towards Warrior Park. But hey, good. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Councillor McCall. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Through you. Um, just, just a question. Is this the place where, because this is all that capital delivery type stuff, and this is where I'd like to see some sort of a table or something so we can actually track where our capital projects are? as in, you know, what stage of that at completion of the running to budget or not running to budget? So we've got um, information there, but it's nothing really, you know, we want to know whether on time, not on time, how far behind, so we know how we're progressing through the year. Yeah, so, yeah. It, it's a good question, Councillor McCall, and um, what we have been working on, and Steve may, Hill may want to comment on this too, through you, Mr Chairman, uh, and we've been working with the capital delivery team on exactly what you're after, it wouldn't normally be through this report, we would report on that, it would normally be through a quarterly corporate reporting 
um, report that would go to council that would have details about the status of projects and, and bits and pieces. The, the service delivery report provides updates on completion and photos and, and issues. And the overall picture will come back through that quarterly corporate reporting that will have statuses and how many contracts are let um, and all that sort of thing. So absolutely that is on our work program and that'll be coming through that uh, corporate quarterly report. Thank you. I'll probably, yeah, thank you. Councillor Finch. Thank you. Um, the Mount Kui landfill stormwater diversion when is that likely to be finished? Or have they even started it with the lockdown is the first question. And if so, how is it progressing and when roughly would be the completion? Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, the basic stormwater work is complete. Uh, there's, uh, and the stormwater is now being diverted away from the landfill. The finishing works uh, I think they started again yesterday and the finishing works, which is re of all the golf course and the fencing and the, uh, the detailed drainage is still to be completed. So, but the main thing is the stormwater is now uh, diverted and no longer going under the landfill. That's great news. Thank you for that. Uh, Councillor McCall, you've got your hand up. Is that from a previous... Right, what have we got? Uh, Councillor Payne. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Look, I just I just wanted to follow on from uh, uh, Councillor Finch's question about that. Um, I, I, I think I guess I had a better understanding of where we're at, but I just see right at the bottom of the paragraph on that uh, that number six that the council's purchased extra land. Now, my thoughts were that we already owned a, a fair chunk of land around Mount Kui, so just. And I think, look, I think it's great that you bought the bit, so it mitigates a bit of um, co consultation and whatever else. But just, do you just want to add a bit more context to that for us, Jerry? Just, I'm just trying to work out where and who really. Okay. okay. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, that piece of land uh, immediately as you go in the entrance to the landfill, there was a piece piece of land there which was uh, an old rock quarry or has been used as a rock quarry immediately on the right-hand side as you come in. And uh, that belonged to Mavora Holdings. And it was sort of a, a little bite out of um, the several hectares that we owned there. It was a, a couple of thousand square metres that um, yeah, was owned by a, a, another party. Thanks, Siri. Right, so if there's no more questions, um, can I have is someone willing to um, move the re recommendation on page 50 that the Service Delivery Committee receives the Capital Delivery Update Report? Uh, Councillor Finch, seconded by Councillor Ludeman. Uh, all those in favour? Those against? That looks unanimous. Right, well, go to page 54, another item for information, the compliance update report. Uh, Jules, you're running Thank you, Mr. This, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Happy to, uh, this is pretty important, so I, I won't take it as read. There's a few things I would like to highlight. Um, we are in the process of getting um, additional um, feedback on our assessment of our compliance reports uh, from a legal perspective. Um, our understanding is there isn't an appeal process for those, but we want to just make sure we're getting an independent assessment. We already had that um, on the initial one. Now we're getting that on the ORC's response and retending to go back um, at a senior staff level and just record uh, our, our, I suppose, a difference in a, a opinion on those compliance gradings compared to the regional councils once we get that independent feedback. Um, the other one I would like to flag is there have been um, with, with some wet weather, there have been some uh, treatment plants that have gotten pretty close to overflowing um, and, and some that have had a bunch a number of issues. We've been keeping the regional council informed of what's been going on and taking actions to, to uh, prevent that and working with the contractor to avoid that as well. 
uh, and happy to um, answer any questions on that. The other compliance issue is, uh, which is obviously health and safety compliance. Um, we have been working through with the Argu and his team and our contractor to deal with a number of health and safety compliance issues. Um, the staff have been doing um, a bit of work out of desktop exercise and also uh, heading out tomorrow to do on-site inspections to hopefully find some common and reasonable um, solutions to health and safety issues and staff have arranged work in the last week, even during lockdown to address some of those issues. So the priority will be, will be getting those resolved as quickly as possible and making sure they uh, don't impact on our ability to perform what we need to do on our pump stations and treatment plants. So happy to take any questions through you, Mr. Chairman. Right, questions. Uh, Councillor Herbert. Thank you, and thank you, Jules. Hey, I was just looking at the Harriet one, Jules, and it, it seems like they're fairly easy wins to get fully compliant. It's really just logs and manuals that need look like they need to be signed off. And it, if I look at um, condition six and condition nine, um, you're saying we're saying logs are fully compliant, and they're saying the logs are missing altogether. It seems to be two completely different arguments. It's a little bit frustrating because you think that they're quite easy wins. If, if the book work's done, then we're just about to be compliant. Is that is, am I reading that wrong? Or? Um, and that, and I think that's why when you when you look further up, some of them actually have been regraded. So that's part of the process we've agreed, where they'll submit a draft compliance report and we'll go back and, and provide information. There have been instances where they've said we didn't receive any of this information at all, and we've been able to go and point out to them that they were sent it. Whether they hadn't linked that up with their compliance side of things, we're not sure. Um, but that's why we have got this process where we get issued a draft uh, compliance assessment and then we can go and have a discussion. And uh, in some cases, those have changed and in some cases, they, they haven't. So we'll continue to work with the ORC staff to, to improve our compliance. And we've now actually got staff who, who can get on and do that. I would like to add one more stop. Um, this compliance grading is based on what was done in the last year. And then a year before, um, it's not the current year. So we have a, a very good OIN manual now, which is uh, ORC is happy about it. So definitely next year will be full compliant with the OIN manual. It was just uh, last year and a year ago. That's uh, We've been arguing with ORC why you're doing it two years ago, but that's what they are reviewing at the moment. Um, sorry, just to add that extra bit. Thanks, Yagi. Uh, Mayor Cadogan. Yeah, just a point before the question. And right, we, we have been arguing as such with the ORC for quite some time, but there is a point where they're the policemen and we're not. So I know that we've talked about it at the audit and risk this morning, but while I understand why we have to challenge them, I hope not too much emphasis is going on. Not sure which staff member too, but all the way through there was concerns for samples and operators, existing workarounds are in place. What does that mean? Um, one, of the, one of the risks that's been highlighted, uh, Mayor Cadogan, uh, in this recent work is when in-river sampling are being undertaken, whether there needs to be other structures or other ways to do it. So um, that's one of the one of the items for discussion with our contractor is how they do their, their in-river sampling. It's being done all around the country by all sorts of different people and regional councils. So uh, from our perspective, I'm sure there'll be a, a reasonable solution to be able to continue to do that essential sampling, which is required for our consent compliance. Um, and, and that's what we have to work through with the contractor to do that. Um, but we, we think it needs to be, it needs to, absolutely needs to be safe, but it also needs to be a sensible approach to how it's done as well. Of all those issues that City Care brought up, what would you say is the most pressing or urgent or the one with the most risk? Which one concerns you the most? Um, uh, they've all got different, different varying different degrees of risk. I mean, the ones that probably concern me the most are ones where they're saying they can't actually access um, some of our sites, but we also think those are some of the ones that can be, with a little bit of effort, they can be addressed relatively easily. Uh, and we also, we also think we need to have a, a discussion about what is safe and how things can be done safely, because there, there does appear to be differences of opinion and and just how safe some practices are, especially when you look at what's being done by other contractors uh, around and what is actually industry good practice. So that's what we'll be looking to use as a benchmark on some of those issues. 
Is there anything from a government or a financial perspective that we can assist to remediate the issues? Oh, I think at this stage, um, until we actually do the assessment, and, and then there are budgets for upgrades of pump stations already in this year's budget, Mika Dogan, I think um, if there are any particular ones where we find there are any issues, we'll definitely be coming back and flagging it. Um, there may be some changes that are going to further increase operating cost. For example, if they need two staff members to do things where they price the contract with one staff member, then those things will come back and further increase operating costs. So um, those will be ones where, we, if those are the solutions, we'll certainly be looking to advise you and keeping in, you informed about that may be a potential outcome um, if that ends up being a solution. Thank you. Just further to, to what Thiago said, um, I, I read that and it didn't look like very nice reading, but when you when he says that it's last year's and, and this year's is, is looking good, it's, um, it makes me feel a lot better. Um, any further questions? If not, um, does someone want to prepare to move that recommendation that the Service Delivery Committee receives a compliance update report? Um, move Councillor Catherwood, seconded Councillor Herbert. All those in favour? A lot of hands up there. Those against? It's passed. Now we'll move to page. Where are we? 67. Another item for information the community projects update report. Um, Mr. Chairman, can I just ask a question? Um, I yep. just wanted to check based on our discussion this morning. Did Councillor Payne, were you going to have a question at all? He's muted, but um, I was just saying that there was a discussion and a potential question that was uh, uh, going to be asked at the compliance meeting. Mm -hmm. Councillor Payne. Mm -hmm. Kenny. Oh, sorry, there I go. I've got my, got my speaker on again now. So, so yeah, look, I, I, this morning I raised the question whether, whether we are reactive or proactive. And, I mean, we've had quite a discussion around that this morning. And, and I mean, at the end of the day, what I want to know is, is um, I mean, I'd like to think that we're proactive, Jules, and, 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 uh, because what what with the um, perhaps the public are seeing around us is a reaction a reactive sort of approach but i'd like to see a proactive approach and so with that i'd like to just say well you know what, what can we do can we meet where as a council as councillors as staff as everything and can we actually do something to to put a proactive slant onto everything here because yeah so that, that's basically it i think i just sorry i did i did take some notes this morning and now i put them somewhere and i can't find them so yeah I, I think through you, Mr. Chairman, I think council has actually done a number of steps recently that have been proactive, yes. um, namely in terms of resourcing and making sure that we are starting to build a team across um, Ben's infrastructure strategy team and also Thiagi's operations team to be able to do the volume of work that we need to do to be compliant. So that's been the first step in actually having the capacity to, to address what is becoming, I mean, it's continuing to get more onerous in terms of making sure we can be compliant. Um, the other aspects where we are being proactive, um, and it's probably taken us a little bit longer than we would have hoped, um, is in our consent renewals with the ORC. So we've met with them and we're, we're, really, we're really going down a path of making sure we have consents that we can meet and we can be compliant with. Um, that is that is causing us issues because one of the one of the key things there was um, making sure we're not investing millions of dollars for a short term consent, uh, and it is looking more and more difficult to do that. But um, as that progresses, we'll keep you informed uh, and come back when we get those consent conditions. So I think that's the the start of being proactive is making sure we are confident we can meet those, and we're we're getting our getting our as as Councillor Herbert mentioned, let's get all that easy wins sorted out. Let's get get reports in on time, get manuals submitted, all those things that are, do come up as consent non-compliances that should be easy to comply with. Let's get those sorted. And then we've only got, uh, we, and we still have some bigger ones to deal with, but those upgrades uh, for those systems um, are, the, are the next stages of getting them compliant. And that's there's work going on at the moment to do that. So I think we are making a, a start and 
we're making gains on being proactive, but we still have a bit more to go in terms of designing our systems that have redundancy. So we're not just meeting um, our standards. We're actually going above and beyond. The only risk we have with that at the moment is we don't know what the goalposts are gonna be. We'll know that in about five or six years. So we wouldn't wanna spend millions of dollars now. And then an example of that could be at the moment, um, there's a bit of pressure to relocate the discharge point for the Waihola discharge through the consent renewal process. Now, the concern I have with that is that might be a good thing to do, but if in six years' time we're looking at a land-based disposal option, that could be $700,000 that's wasted if we actually need to go to land disposal. So that would be one real concern I would have if we were looking at um, a big capital item to move the discharge point that might be redundant in five or six years' time. So we just need to be careful that we're taking into account where we might end up when we're doing these interim upgrades, which is uh, what we've agreed for a short-term consensus with the Regional Council. Oh, thanks, Jules. Look, that, that was important for me to hear, and I, I think it's probably important for the rest of the councillors to hear that as well. So, so thanks for that, Jules. Right, back to... Um, Page 67 and the community projects update report um, is Sharon. We'll go to Sharon. Kia ora. Kia ora, Chair. I am here. So um, I just have one update regarding the Department of Conservation Otago Conservation Management Strategy, which we uh, submitted to. We have now had some feedback from that. Um, the final draft is going to the Otago Conservation Board, so it's not final, final yet, but it would appear that some of the policy changes that we and other submitters have influenced are going to allow research into future development under the way they've rewritten the policy rather than waiting 10 years for the next um, strategy review. So other than that, um, I'll take the report as read and happy to answer any questions. Mia Cadogan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Kia ora, Sharon. How are you? Hey, Kia great ora. report seeing so many projects getting traction. Just on page 69, 1.3, the ORC um, riverbank graveling. Uh, yeah, it's in their plan, but it's a 10-year plan. What year did they have it programmed for? So, Jules may help me here if I'm wrong, but I believe they've put $100,000 for each of the next three years. So, the first this financial year, the next one, and the next one. They're intending this financial year to be planning for the development, and then the actual, actual installation is likely to be in the next two financial years. Jules, have I got that right? Yep, that's bang on. Um, thank you, Sharon. They, they may get a little bit of construction at the end of this year, but uh, it depends on the... They have met with us uh, through you, Mr Chair, and, and they are starting... Um, the process and we've sent all of the designs and information that we've gathered from Tonkin and Taylor through to them as well. So um, they are underway on that project and it should happen over the next um, two and a half years. Kia Jules. Councillor Phelps. Thank you, Chair. Um, thanks, Sharon, for the report. Just uh, querying 1.9 regarding Satinga Pool. Um, just there re regarding the barbecue, has that been discussed with the Centennial Park group? Well, where the location of that's going to be, or? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead, Jules. Through you, Mr Chairman, it's probably one for me to answer. Um, the intention with that was not to be competing with what's happening in the park. It was to be completely enclosed within a secure pool area, so it would be available for pool customers to use when they're at the pool, rather than it to be available for the public. I um, mean, it was more to provide additional options for families when they're using the pool to um, to be able to do that. And we haven't purchased that, but we thought that if it's in a controlled environment like that, it doesn't need to be a, um, a large commercial one that can be um, available for the public. It can be controlled and monitored by uh, pool staff. So that was the intention for that. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Southern. You're, mute, you're muted, Carol. You're muted. Sorry. Um, just a quick question. A rough estimate for the fence, $40,000. Has that not been all sorted? Um, the Kia ora, Councillor Sutherland. Um, the um, pool fencing was including um, tree removal. So the final costing would be dependent on a bit of landscaping involvement as well. And the problem with the site is that we've realised now it's a contaminated site due to the old gas works being there. So we have to do some research before we do any um, underground movement on that site. 
due to its historic use. Okay, but the, it, it has been sorted with Ken and the camping ground, hasn't it? Yeah, the actual fence cost. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm talking about a different playground, um, Councillor Southern. I was talking about the uh, Larnack Street playground. Oh, um, yeah, the, um, the camping ground one has been paid, is my understanding, yes. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, Councillor Finch. Thank you. Um, what is the latest update about the Milter Waihola water pipeline, please? Dates, anything, starting times, whatever. Um, again, for you, Mr. Chairman, it's probably more appropriate for me to answer this than uh, Sharon. Yeah. Um, that is budgeted over the next two and a half years, Councillor Finch. So the this year's target is to get the landowner agreement, all of finalising the designs and getting a contract let for it. Um, you may have seen in part of uh, the capital delivery report, one of the things we are looking at is looking to uh, look at potentially a pipeline procurement contract for because we've got some pretty big pipeline projects and it might enable us to secure better pricing for all of our pipeline renewal work. And the Milton to Waihola pipeline at about 15 kilometres is, uh, would be would be part of that and potentially provide some cost savings for other contracts over the next few years. So tension is design planning and hopefully tendering this year and then construction late this year, but probably more likely next over the next two years. Um, one of the other things we're looking at is whether we can work together with the landowner in the Melbourne area to um, look to reduce their costs through their, their development and make sure the pipelines in a location where it won't need to be realigned um, for the eroding and further developments. Councillor Feltz. Thank you. And, um, I don't know if this is the And wrong. then is the... Sorry, I was still... Sorry, can I carry on? Oh, um, yeah, is there I'm going there. to be extra storage to put in Waihaula to be able to store a lot more capacity? And what capacity extra have the pipes got in them for more housing to go ahead in Waihola, please? Uh, there's significant extra capacity in the pipeline. Um, we hadn't allowed for a huge amount of additional capacity in Waihola as we had discussed it, whether it would be an on-demand uh, uh, set up or whether it would continue to be um, a restricted scheme and the, the feedback we got from council was it's going to stay restricted which means we don't need a huge amount of extra uh, storage in Waihola. Um, part of the cost of going to on demand would have been putting a reservoir in there and upgrading pipes and those sorts of things but from memory there's something that I mean there's I think there's there's something like capacity for an extra 300 houses in that area plus potentially extra uh, in the rural area around there as well um, but we've we would have to double check that but we've designed for quite a bit of extra capacity going up to the area uh, councillor Fouts. thank you through the chair i'm just not too sure this is the right place to ask but at one of our meetings we had the those couple of young boys um proceed regarding that bike uh, track. Is there been anything more done about that, or is this not the right format? Does anyone know? Um, kia ora, Councillor Feltz. I, I don't have an update on that. Um, I would have to research that with the Community Development Officer, being Jean. Um, I believe she is working with those groups. Thank you. Uh, Steve. Steve. Um, through you, Mr Chairman, if you're talking about um, the boys and the, the the bike thing um, that they were interested in. Um, there's been some work to look at the possibility of um, uh, using the um, the old forestry block beside the golf course and the and where the works are being done with the um, dump now for a downhill track, and they're just doing some preliminary investigations now with that. And my understanding is uh, Gene's involved with a number of people, and they were involving those two young. Um, um, uh, young men as well. Oh, no, it's good to keep them uh, interested and involved. Thank you. Right. If there's uh, no more questions, uh, Jules. No. Th yep, um, through you, Mr. Chairman. It doesn't particularly relate to this agenda item, but just before you finish the meeting, I just thought I'd flag the time 
uh, and just raise the possibility with the two further meetings to come, whether we look to reschedule the roading workshop discussion for some stage uh, next week. Um, just you've had a big day already with audit and risk, and I know you've still got two agenda right, uh, agendas to go through. So happy to be guided by uh, by, by councillors on that and the mayor. Yeah. What we had uh, planned, God. George, was that Ken is chairing the final meeting, and when he finishes the meeting, we'll have a show of hands then. That, what is the time? Yeah, that was a long one. It's not looking too flash, yeah. is it? But what's that? No. We're just still holding hover. Yep, no, happy to do that, me, Cadogan. I just thought we'd flag that now since we've already already at quarter to four and you haven't had a break uh, and you've still got two two agendas to get through. Not looking and, good. And to be fair, I mean, we were looking at uh, quality, um, you know, a one hour quality session. So um, I'm just probably suggesting realistically it's not going to be quality and you'd be struggling to, um, you know, one hour is going to take you right through well after five o'clock. That, that's all we were saying. Um, thanks, Your Worship. Yeah, agreed. Right, so if there's no more, um, can we have, is there someone prepared to um, move the recommendation on page 67 that the Service Delivery Committee receives a community projects update report? Uh, move Councillor uh, Mayor Cadogan, seconded Councillor Ludeman, all those in favour? Against? None. So that's passed. And before I close, the uh, the meeting, I must say that not only does he look like he's in the most comfortable spot, but he also gets the prize for the best dressed uh, Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, <laughs> the only one wearing a tie. Uh, I'll now declare this, uh, this, meeting, this meeting over and you can probably sneak in 10 minutes um, for a cup of coffee and stretch your legs. Um, now, you leave your Zoom yeah. on for the across the 